sometimes a scene just needs a lot going on. And keyframing everything will certainly take too long than, say, I have patience for. On top of that, adjusting so many animations is just an incredibly daunting task. This is where procedural animation really shines, as it gives you a lot of control and saves you quite a bit of time, particularly when you start scaling up your scenes. So let's look at how to create this UFO. By the way, this video was brought to you by my Robotic Planet course. Hot surface robot creation in Blender made fun and easy. Link down in the description. Our UFO elements are pretty simple, but can still be downloaded from the resource section on CG Boost. We have a ship, a disc, and laser gun, and laser. And these all have their origin points set up so that they can be pivoted around in our geometry nodes setup. And to start our geometry nodes, we are going to use a sacrificial object. Namely, I'm just going to hide these objects here, a cube. Now we can move on over to our modifiers, add modifier, geometry nodes. Let's create new and just call it UFO. Now I'm going to drag out a new window here from the top so we can see our UFO in the 3D viewport here and switch this one over to geometry nodes editor. And I'm going to hit N on the keyboard to hide our side panel here. Now we don't need the initial geometry, the cube here. So we can hold down control, right click and drag to kill that join. And instead we want to bring in our UFO objects. So let's just unhide them like so. And from the outline here, without selecting them, we can just drag in like so. So click and drag, click and drag. If we were to select it, you can see that it jumps on over to our modeled element. So we don't want that. Let's just select our cube again and drag back out. Okay, so we have our ship, disc, laser, and laser gun. Let's just put the laser gun above. And now we can hide our objects in the outliner. And while we're here, let's just rename the cube to UFO. And to keep things organized, we're going to select all our objects here and do Shift and P. This creates a frame around and then F2 and we'll name it Objects. And we can join all of these up using Shift A and a Join Geometry node. Plugging in all of the geometry like so. Doesn't really matter what order. And the output into our output geometry. And there we have our spaceship. However, we can't really see our laser gun. So to correct that, we're going to use a transform geometry node. So let's just search for that transform geometry. And we want our laser gun here. Let's plop it in between. And we want to create our offset along the Z here. But instead of doing it within the geometry node, I'm just going to create a vector node and plug that in just so we can separate this a little bit better and see what we're working with and move it down to somewhere like that looks good. And we can test the rotation as well to see what it looks like. Yep, that looks good to me. So let's shift and P F2 and we can name this laser gun offset. And the reason we are using a transform geometry as opposed to say a set position node is because it is addressing the object in its entirety versus every single vertex in that object, which has its own performance overhead. Right, the only thing we really need to do now is introduce the same offset for our laser here. So to remedy this, let's just control and right click to cut our laser out, duplicate our join node, move it here and introduce our laser before the transform geometry setup here so that everything moves nicely with it. Right, time to add some ambient animation motion to all of our objects. So to do so, we can introduce another transform geometry or duplicate the one we already have, but introduce it after the final join geometry node because we want to adjust everything. And we can do so with a noise texture. So if we introduce a noise texture here, we have an RGB output for our color here, which can be remapped to the XYZ of our translation. So let's plug that in. And it has given us an invalid link. And this is because the transform geometry node isn't expecting this particular variable. It hasn't got all of the information. So we need to give it a vector. And the vector we can give it is time because we'll be animating it after all. So let's introduce time and frame. And now you can see if we play back, we have 
uh, a very frantic vibrating almost spaceship. So we need to slow that down. And to start with, we can use our detail here. Just remove that so that there's no higher frequencies of noise. And I'm just going to introduce a math node after our frame here and multiply it by a, a very low number. Let's go with 0 0.003. Now, if we play back, nice. We have more of an undulating vibe. But if we look on the top here, we can see that it is offset ever so slightly. And this is because we have normalized checked, which has the same result as forcing whatever values the noise texture spits out, which can consist of incredibly negative and incredibly positive numbers, forcing them into zero to one, which explains why we can't go into the minus axis of, in this case, looking from the top, R, Y, and X. Thankfully, we can just uncheck normalize like so. And this brings us into the center so that we can move around that center point again. Okay, this looks good. Now let's set up rotation here and we have handily a rotation input. But before we do that, let's just select all of these nodes here, shift and P, move it into its own frame, F2 and call it ship location. And as an added little benefit here, I kind of like to move on over to our node options while hitting N on the keyboard to expand and just check the color and choose a color that matches the input it's going into. So sort of a purple here, which matches the translation input. Now we want to do the same for rotation. So to start with, we can duplicate everything. Shift and D in our ship location here and plug in our color to our rotation like so. Again, an invalid input. So we need to transfer this RGB into something that the rotation input understands. Thankfully, we can use a Euler to rotation. Let's plug that in here and then the re rotation out here. And we have our result. But I don't know about you. Let's just extend our frame range here. But the general cadence of the rotation here feels too in sync with the ship location. Thankfully, we can make a few adjustments. Firstly, I'm going to rename this frame so we don't get confused to ship rotation. Hitting N on the keyboard, changing it to a rotation color like so. Then we can introduce a math node directly after our scene time and we can effectively add an offset. So I'm going to go with minus. Let's go three, three, three. And now we're not perfectly synced with our noise textures. But I'm not overly happy with just how wobbly this spaceship is. So I'm going to introduce another math node, but this time vector math. So we have the R, G, and B, or the X, Y, and Z. Introduce it here, making sure it's in our frame as well. Switching it on over to multiply and just choosing how much rotation on each axis we want. So for example, I don't really want any on the Z axis, which is this one. So we can keep that zero and we want just a tiny amount on X and Y. Start with 0.5. That feels good. Maybe even a little less. Let's go with 0.3. Yeah, that feels nice to me. Okay, it's time to set up the laser cannon, but do you know what else shoots cool lasers? Well, none of the robots in Robotic Planet. Okay, that was a terrible segue, but they do do other equally cool stuff like having speakers, EQ, LCD face displays, retractable claws, jet thrusters, hydraulics, and more. So if you want to learn hard surface modeling and full robot creation in Blender the fun way, this course is for you. Okay, it's looking pretty good, but also our laser cannon here is looking pretty static. Thankfully, we already have a transform geometry node set up to move it around. So let's do so with a noise texture. But again, we're going to duplicate what we already have to create a little bit of variation. So just going to make sure our Euler to rotation is within our frame here and then select all of the ship rotation, duplicate, move it down, rename this to laser rotation. And I'm just going to grab everything and move it above so we can get a little bit closer to our node setup. Let's have it here. And we can plug the output into our rotation like so. 
and let's see what that looks like. Not really strong enough, so we can dial up our values here. Excellent. That looks just enough to not intersect with itself. Now let's switch on our material view here. And you can see it's, it's looking pretty good. It's lasering things nicely. However, it would be nice to switch on and off the laser now and again to make it look like it's actively firing at things. And to do so, we can use a delete geometry node on our laser. So let's just grab this, move it up and search for delete geometry. And here you can see it's gone and it's looking for a selection input here. And this can be a value. So if we were to plug in this value here, you can see as soon as we go above zero here, it deletes the geometry. Now, there are other ways we can introduce this value. We can use our existing setups here. So let's take our ship location. We can use the factor out and plug it into our selection. And now you can see that it fires on occasion, giving it a little bit more purpose. I knew something didn't feel right, and that is the rotation of our disc here, because it's a UFO. You know, it needs to have that pointless disc rotation. Thankfully, we can introduce another transform geometry. So let's select this one here, move it across, and you can see which axis we want to affect. We just want to spin this. Thankfully, we can do so fairly simply. If we drag out, search for our Euler to rotation, like so. Now we have a nice vector input and we can plug in a combine X, Y, and Z. So we can address X, Y, and Z separately. And then in our Z, let's just move everything across a little bit. We're just going to plug in time. And now it spins at great speed, but we can control that as we have learned previously with a math node set to multiply and toning it down until we're happy. That looks good. So let's select all of these nodes, Shift and P, F2, and this can be our disk rotation. And again, for consistency, let's give it that nice rotation-y color. And we can dive into some of these variables to adjust things, but in order to make it a little bit easier on ourselves, let's look at setting up some group input settings. We can see here we have our group input hidden away. If yours has disappeared for some reason, you can always bring it back by just adding group, group input, like so. And the first thing I think it would be nice to adjust here is the disk speed of our UFO. So we already know that we have our disk rotation here and that this math multiply changes the variable. So let's just drag that value into our group input into a blank slot here. And we can rename that slot if we go N on the keyboard, make sure we are on group. Just expanding our sockets here and rename it disk speed like so. And now we can, for example, duplicate our whole UFO setup. Alt D, move it up a little bit and move on over to our modifiers here and give a completely different speed to our second UFO here. But you may have noticed that, well, both UFOs are performing pretty much identical actions beyond the disk spin speed. So let's look at how we can create a group input to give a little bit more variation. So to start with, we want to affect the rotations and locations of our second ship here or any ship. So we'll need some math nodes. So let's search for math like so, and we want to keep it add. We want to introduce them after the scene time nodes. So one here, Duplicate, Ooh, kept it on there. So let's Alt and P, duplicate one here, duplicate one here, and that's all. That's all we need. That's good. And now we can use those ads here, plug them in to our group node socket here. You can plug all three of them in, like so. And also, I'm just going to shift right click to create a reroute point here and just hit G and move it down, just a bit cleaner. And going into our group input node, N on the keyboard again, we can call this one motion seed. So now with our top one selected, motion seed, we can change completely, which gives us a nice animation offset. And now we can duplicate them to our heart's content and keep creating nice offsets in whichever way we want. 
and you can see we can build up uh, a nice swarm of spaceships quite easily. Okay, now we have a UFO that we can easily manipulate as a nice self-contained single object, as well as creating as many duplicates as we want and offsetting the motions. It's also worth mentioning that if for any reason your viewport starts to slow down, you can always jump into the Geometry Nodes editor and introduce a bake operation. Switch it on over to animation and then bake out the motion so it doesn't have to recalculate the entire chain of nodes. I hope this video serves as an example of how there are multiple ways to animate within Blender. And if you're still interested in geometry nodes, shader nodes, or even regular rigging come to that, then I perhaps could tempt you to jump on over to the Robotic Planet course on cgboost.com, where we create robots from scratch as well as looking at some cool techniques along the way. I hope to see you there.